and Happy New Year. Oh yeah, oh yeah, Happy Church oh Christmas Church, 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 Church New the Year. The That's first right. First Sunday of Advent. So welcome to Year B. Yeah. <laughs> Yes, year B. As we are, run, as year we are running down the clock on 2020. Oh, that's right. We can't get out of 2020 fast that, enough. That's for sure. It can only go up from here. Absolutely. <laughs> we hope. Absolutely. <laughs> but here we are in the season of Advent, looking forward to Christmas. So let's get Christmas out of the way first. Yeah. Christmas is going to be a little bit different this year. Different service times in both our places are dictated solely by COVID and trying to conform to safety protocols. Health regulations mean that the large crowd that we're used to having on Christmas is actually discouraged. And the only way that we can get around that is to have more than a few services to spread out the crowd. So that's what you're doing. And that means that you need to at least indicate uh, through when we, when we finally announce the service times that we do have, which you'll likely get a letter in the mail or something like yeah. that, mm -hmm. make an indication to the church so that we know how many to expect in one space because at some point if we reach maximum capacity, we will need to literally shut the doors and of the church. And that's the last thing so, we want And that's, that's, li that's done by health regulations saying only so many people are allowed in the building, and yes, we will be holding to that. So mm -hmm. if you plan on attending to your, a Christmas Eve or Christmas Day service, it is of paramount importance that you contact mm -hmm. your local parish to say, I intend on coming at this service to ensure we have a space for you. Mm -hmm. We also need to mention that music around Advent and Christmas is part of the liturgical spiritual flavor that comes at this time of the year. So much about what we do, isn't and it? And COVID, again, is interfering with expressing your spirituality. So we are doing Advent and Christmas lessons and carols recorded online that you can participate at home. We'll have the music while you're about to see Advent lessons and carols with the carols and the words to sing along to sing along at home and on the fourth sunday of advent we will have christmas lessons and carols to right. sing along so with that in mind let's start our worship for advent lessons and carols <laughs> Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all and also with you we pray together Almighty God to you, you all hearts are open, open all, all desires known and from you no secrets are hidden cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord Amen Blessed are you, O Lord our God, ruler of the universe, creator of light and darkness. In this holy season, when the sun's light is swallowed up by the growing darkness of the night, you renew your promise to reveal among us the splendor of your glory, enfleshed and visible to us in Jesus Christ, your Son. Through the prophets, you teach us to hope for his reign of peace. Through the outpouring of his spirit, you open our blindness to the glory of his presence. Strengthen us in our weakness, support us in our stumbling efforts to do your will, and free our tongues to sing your praise. For to you are all honor and blessing are due, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let's have our readings. The first reading is from Genesis chapter 2, verses 4 through 9, and 15 through 25. 
creation of the first people. In the day that the Lord God made the earth and the heavens, when no plant of the field was yet in the earth, and no herb in the field had yet sprung up, for the Lord God had not caused it to rain upon the earth, and there was no one to till the ground, but a stream would rise from the earth and water the whole face of the ground. Then the Lord God formed man from the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and the man became a living being. And the Lord God planted a garden in Eden in the east, and there he put the man whom he had formed. Out of the ground the Lord God made to grow every plant that is pleasant to the sight and good for food. The tree of life also in the midst of the garden, and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. The Lord God took the man and put him in the garden, in the garden of Eden, to till it and keep it. And the Lord God commanded the man, you may freely eat of every tree of the garden, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, you shall not eat. For in the day that you eat of it, you shall die. Then the Lord God said, It is not good that the man should be alone. I will make him a helper as his partner. So out of the ground, the Lord God formed every animal of the field and every bird of the air and brought them to the man to see what he would call, what man would call and give names to all the cattle and to the birds of the air and to every animal in the field. But for the man, there was no helper found as his partner. So the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon the man, and he slept. Then he took one of his ribs, closed up his, its place with flesh, and the rib that the Lord God had taken from the man he made into a woman and brought her to the man. Then the man said, At This is last, it is bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh. This one should be called woman, for out of man this one was taken. Therefore a man leaves his father and his mother, clings to his wife, and they become one flesh. And the man and his wife were both naked and were not ashamed. Second reading, Genesis 3, 1 to 15, human rebellion against God. 
Now the serpent was more crafty than any other wild animal that the Lord God had made. He said to the woman, Did God say you shall not eat from any tree in the garden? The woman said to the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees in the garden, but God said you shall not eat of the tree that is in the middle of the garden, nor shall you touch it or you shall die. But the serpent said to the woman, You will not die. For God knows that when you eat of it, your eyes will be opened, and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. So when the woman saw that the tree was good for fruit, and that it was a delight to the eyes, and that the tree was to be desired to make one wise, she took of its fruit and ate. She also gave some to her husband, who was with her, and he ate. Then the eyes of both were opened, and they knew that they were naked, And they sewed fig leaves together and made loincloths for themselves. They heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden at the time of the evening breeze. And the man and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. But the Lord God called to the man and said to him, Where are you? He said, I heard the sound of you in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked and I hid myself. God said, Who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten from the tree which I commanded you not to eat? The man said, The woman whom you gave to be with me, she gave me fruit from the tree, and I ate. Then the Lord God said to the woman, What is this that you have done? The woman said, The serpent tricked me, and I ate. The Lord God said to the serpent, Because you have done this, cursed are you among all animals and among all wild creatures. Upon your belly you shall go, and dust you shall eat all the days of your life. I will put enmity between you and the woman, and between your offspring and hers. He will strike your head, and you will strike his heel. This is the word of the Lord. Verses 2 through 7. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. 
You have multiplied nation. You have increased its joy. They rejoice before you as with joy at the harvest, as people exult when dividing plunder. For the yoke of their burden and the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor, you have broken as on the day of Midian. For all the boots of the trampling warriors and all the garments rolled in blood shall be burned as fuel for the fire. For a child has been born, a son given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulders, and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow continually, and there shall be endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. He will establish and uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time onwards and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. The fourth reading, Jeremiah 31, 31 to 34, a new covenant is promised. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. It will not be like the covenant that I made with their ancestors when I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, a covenant they broke, though I was their husband, says the Lord. But this is the covenant I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will put my law within them, and I will write it on their hearts. I will be their God, and they shall be my people. No longer shall they teach one another or say to each other, Know the Lord, for they shall all know me, from the least of them to the greatest, says the Lord. For I will forgive their iniquity and remember their sin no more. The word of the Lord.
fifth reading is from Luke chapter 1, verses 26 through 38, the angelic proclamation to Mary. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth, to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary, and he came to her and said, Greetings, favored one. The Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you'll name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and his kingdom there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I am a virgin? The angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore the child to be born will be holy. He will be called Son of God. And now your relative Elizabeth in her old age has also conceived a son, and this, will, and this is the sixth month for her who was said to be barren. For nothing will be impossible with God. Then Mary said, Here I am, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your will. And then the angel departed from her. Well, happy Advent 1. Here we are. Lessons <laughs> yes. and carols. Church New Year. Calendar New Year starting in a month. Be glad to see the back of 2020. Yeah. And the readings. The last Advent few lessons weeks. and carols, right? I yeah, mean, yeah, but the readings the last few weeks have been pretty, you know, judgment. Wise and foolish virgins, you know, kind of yeah. apocalyptic. Um, Yep. You know, going to stand before the throne and have to give testimony. Definitely oh. heavy. Mm -hmm. Definitely felt a little darker. Mm -hmm. uh, but, but there was still hope. Like, something could maybe happen. But it wasn't hope is here. It was mm -hmm. more of in the background. And then you had these... And then Advent's much the same mm -hmm. way. When you, when you mm -hmm. look at the Advent readings, they're very apocalyptic. Yeah. And, I mean, they're, but there's a, the, the sense of hope that's behind it is somehow different. There's an intensity it's, that's that's changed, right? There's yeah. There's there's a light shining in the darkness. That's why I have my. This is my yeah. Advent <laughs> yes. mask with stars on it. Right. Um, I love Advent. It's my favorite season of the church year because it's about anticipation. It's about something wonderful is going to happen. Right. And you're just waiting for it. And in the darkness and gloom. You know, there's the first candle in the first week and the second candle in the second right. week. And light is growing. The light of hope is growing, even though it's getting darker and more miserable outside. Right. Yeah, it, yeah. so like just before Advent, that it's almost like you have hope, that you're hoping you have hope and light. Mm -hmm. And then you hit Advent and the hope turns into, oh, no, hope is coming. Hope and, is on the and way. And you had a really good example so, of that. For me, it was when the Pfizer announced that they had a possible vaccine that would work. Prior to that, we all kind of had this vague some idea. Point we we hope at some happen. point maybe yeah. there'll be a vaccine in an unforeseen way it could be there. Mm -hmm. The minute and the day that they announced we had a 90% of success rate, we're very confident, but we're not done yet. Well, that's the flip between... We could have hope to hope is here. Hope is on the way. It's expected. And we know that the hope... And yeah, emotionally, that day, it was like... You could feel you everyone could, walk out. Yeah. People were actually smiling. We had a bit of a bounce in our step. And it was all because of a simple change in one announcement mm -hmm. where hope went from vague to tangible. You could wrap mm -hmm. your head around it. And I guess that's what Christmas Day is about. The hope realized. Hope is realized. Hope is, is not, not, not to say Jesus is the vaccine, but in the analogy, yeah. When that piece is here and we can acknowledge it, we can go and we can, yeah, that's what this part is about. So in Advent, we have this weird valley where we start out 
and we're kind of down near the low part where it's all dark and gloomy and we hope for hope. And then we have the expectation through hope until we have hope realized. And that's expressed in the readings. Sounds like a good intro to Lessons and Carols. Oh, man. continue with prayer. Accept, O Lord, our thanks and praise for all you have done for us. We thank you for the splendor of the whole creation, for the beauty of this world, for the wonder of life, and for the mystery of love. We thank you for the blessing of family and friends, and for the loving care which surrounds us on every side. We thank you for setting us tasks which demand our best efforts, and for leading us to accomplishments which satisfy and delight us. We thank you also for those disappointments and failures that lead us to acknowledge our dependence on you alone. Above all, we thank you for your Son, Jesus Christ, for the truth of his word and the example of his life, for his steadfast obedience by which he overcame temptation, for his dying through which he overcame death, for his rising to life again, in which we are raised to the life of your kingdom. Grant us the gift of your spirit, that we may know Christ and make him known, 
and through him at all times and in all places may give thanks to you in all things. Amen. Amen. As the Savior taught us, let us pray. Our, our Father, Father in heaven, heaven, hallowed be your name. Your, your kingdom, kingdom come, your will be done, done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the, For the kingdom, kingdom, the power, the power and the, the glory, glory are yours, now, now and, and forever. forever. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, give us grace to cast away the works of darkness and put on the armor of light. Now in the time of this mortal life, which your Son, Jesus Christ, came to us in great humility, that on the, that last day, when he shall come again in his glorious majesty to judge both the living and the dead, we may rise to the life immortal, through him who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And this is the seasonal blessing for Advent. May Almighty God, by whose providence our Savior Christ came among us in great humility, sanctify you with the light of his blessing and set you free from all sin. May he, whose second coming in power and great glory we await, make you steadfast in faith, joyful in hope, and constant in love. May you who rejoice at the first advent of our Redeemer, at his second advent, be rewarded with unending life and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you this day and always. Amen. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God.